Greetings from Lenoxville, Quebec, where I'm coming to you from the Bishops University campus. My name is Dan Seneker. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment and Retention here at Bishops, and also an alumnus from the class of 1994. Today, I'd like to welcome members from our Students' Representative Council as they join me in our co-video isolation series. Um, so welcome SRC members. Thank you for joining me today. So uh, Enzo, maybe we'll start with you as the incoming or the current president of uh, students here at Bishops for the 2020-2021 academic year. Um, can you just take us a few minutes and just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about what the SRC does. Yep, absolutely. So I'm Enzo. I'm going into my third year at Bishop studying psychology. Um, and as mentioned, I'm this year's SRC president. So the SRC stands for Students Representative Council. Um, and our, our mission statement is really to, um, to assess, advocate, and act on behalf of students' interest in order to ensure that we're fostering an exceptional university experience. So that means that we're working for students and we're looking at their, their needs and wants and, and we advocate for that at the university level, the provincial level, the federal level. Um, we offer student opportunities and resources like student jobs, peer support, peer mentoring. We host events like O Week and Winterfest and we oversee and support extracurriculars like um, SRC sports and clubs and student associations and academic societies. So it's a quick overview of what the SRC is, and, and my role is really to just oversee the entirety of the organization and making sure that I'm supporting and helping the team members to make sure that we're um, really addressing the needs and wants of the students. Great, thank you for that, Enzo. And you mentioned team members, so we have a few other of your team members here today. So maybe we'll turn to Georges Philippe next to introduce yourself and tell us about what your role on the SRC is. Hi everyone, so my name is Josh Philip. I'm the VP Academic for this year's BUSRC, and I handle all things academic and advocacy uh, regarding committees. I sit a lot of committees, complaints as well. I'm always there to help students with uh, any, any needs they would have regarding professors, uh, or just to help navigate the, the university environment that can be a bit confusing at times. Perfect. And how about uh, you, Izzy? Who are you and what is your role? Hi, yeah, so I'm Izzy. I'm the Vice President Student Life, the SRC, and my role is to advocate for students uh, on all aspects of student life outside of the classroom, um, having to do with student health and well-being, uh, that's physical, mental, sexual health, um, and as well as safety and social experience um, that they may encounter. So I play a role as well in clubs management. So interacting with those student associations, academic societies, uh, clubs and, and sports teams and groups. So um, yeah, I work also closely with the other representatives on matters of equity and environment uh, and health. So that Great. Uh, me. Thank you. And last but not least, Amelia, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So I'm the director of events for this school year, and my job is to organize the events that the SRC throws, which include Orientation Week, there's Country Fest, Survive the Gate, Winter Fest, and um, any other event that seems pertinent to us. And yeah, I just work hard and make sure that everyone has a good time and stays safe and yeah, stays entertained. Great. Well, I'm going to have a bunch of questions for you, but before we do that, Enzo, do you want to tell us about some of the other uh, executive members of the SRC and what their roles are and who they are? Yep, absolutely. So we also have Bernard Duchesne. He's our director of finance. Um, so he oversees our annual budget, makes sure that we're spending our money wisely and appropriately. Um, we also have Hannah Wallace, who's our director of communications and marketing. So she really helps us make sure that we're communicating with students that they know what's going on, but that also we know what uh, students need and want. Uh, we also have Cedric Moore. He's our VP external. So he's really working with external communities from, from bishops. So that includes the Quebec Student Union. Just making sure that we have um, an open dialogue with the government and other communities outside of bishops. We also have Aaron Mallory, who's our general manager of administration, and Stephanie Thomas, who's our general manager of operations. Um, so they help support us in, in our roles and, and help keep the SRC going. Okay, fantastic. So thank you. That uh, should give our viewers a little bit uh, better understanding of, of what you guys do and who you are and uh, where they can go and knock on what doors when they have questions when they do arrive on campus. 
But let's talk a little bit about fall 2020. So this is going to be a, a very unique year, I think, for all of us. Um, and you guys have been hard at work virtually and remotely um, so far at the beginning of your tenure. But uh, maybe Amelia will turn to you and say, like, ask you, what is what are you planning for fall 2020 and, and how's, how's it going to shape up? What's it going to look like for students? Yeah, so it's been really interesting trying to predict what we'll be able to do next year. But with the way things are opening up, I'm pretty excited that we'll be able to do some things. Uh, we're looking at opening up some outdoor gate nights and we have our orientation week, which we will be running a lot of events online for people that may not be able to come here and may be stuck in quarantine during that week. But we're also gonna try and have as, as many events as possible in person. So that, that always includes respecting social distancing, respecting all the like max capacities that we're gonna have to be dealing with. Um, but it looks like it's gonna work. I'm excited for it. And uh, during the fall, we're still looking at doing our country fest because it's outdoors. And um, a couple of other, we're gonna try and do as many outdoor events. So bring as many warm clothes as possible. I think that's the best recommendation I can give you so we can draw this out as long as possible. And by country fest, you mean country western, correct? Not country, uh, western. country of origin. Yeah. And no, then also, no, yeah. And also gate for those, uh, those students who are watching who may not know what the gate is. Can you briefly describe what the gate is and how it operates? Yes. So the gate is our on campus bar slash watering hole, which it commonly likes to call itself. And uh, it's located in our student union building. It's fresh under renovation, so it's going to look extra fancy. Um, and typically it's open Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights um, for various vibes and genres of themes. Uh, this year, we don't know exactly what the regulations are going to be, but we're very confident that something is going to exist and we're gonna, just going to be as creative as possible and work with the students to give them the best on-campus bar experience they can have with everything going on. And where do all the proceeds from the gate go to? Yeah, so all the proceeds get recycled back into the SRC budget. And that way, anytime you go buy something from the gate, you're basically helping out the entire student union, which is very exciting. So yeah. it's an endless loop of money. Yeah, so it goes right back into the students' uh, um, student coffers to run great events and do other things, right? Exactly. Fantastic. So maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, orientation week. You mentioned that uh, um, that some of it is going to be online for those that can't make it to campus. But can you just kind of walk us through what orientation week usually involves and what and what kind of plans you're you're doing for uh, this year's um, edition of it? Yes. So orientation week, the way it works is you get set up with um, a couple of team leaders, which are uh, upper years, and they volunteer to be your guides through the first week and as well through your whole first semester. And it's a way for you to really just find your friends, find people to weather that first week with, because it can be scary, it can be nerve wracking, but once you find a buddy, they'll get you through it. Um, so that's always the goal of it, is to just get you used to socializing with these people and then as well as getting used to how the school works. So getting you on track with your classes and everything of how that works. Um, this year, the way it's gonna work is you're still gonna be set up with your team and with your upper year mentors, so to call them. So you'll still have a point of contact to be able to talk to them and deal with any concerns and they'll be able to direct you in the right direction. And um, depending on what your personal situation is, you're gonna do orientation week to the best of your ability. If you're on campus, and you, you're done your quarantine, then you're gonna be able to go to the events. If you're on campus and stuck in quarantine, or if you're at home, then you're gonna do the events online. And there, we have trivia nights set up, we have some scavenger hunts, we have, uh, there's karaoke nights that are possible. There's an endless world of, of online events are starting to be created right now, and we're gonna use that to the best of our ability to make sure it happens. Great, thanks for that. Um, so I'm going to turn to Enzo and George Philippe and Izzy to help answer this question. So can you tell us a little bit about how you're working with the other university units on campus to get ready for the fall? So what's being done behind the scenes? Absolutely. So I can maybe start with that and then I'll, I'll send it to George and Izzy. So we are in constant communication with a variety of different um, university units. So whether that's in student life or academic, um, and I'm speaking 
frequently with the administration to make sure that we're up to date with um, how the university is moving forward, but that they're also up to date with what the, you know, what the SRC is working on. Um, and this might be a good time, I guess, for George or Izzy to, to hop in and talk about both the student life perspective and the academic perspective. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, on, on my end, it's more on the academic side. Uh, so anyone from the VP academic to faculty, uh, it could be with working on experiential learning with the admins, trying to see our strategy from there, or simply the timetable for the fall, uh, how you're going to schedule your courses, which one are going to be online, uh, what's happening for what's happening for the fall right now is is our biggest uh, biggest challenge, and we're we're really working hard uh, to get that going and to see how we can make uh, this this learning environment as as Amelia was saying available and accessible and of quality for anyone whether they are in person uh, or studying remotely yeah and then in uh, in student life uh, we're working with uh, student services very closely um, particularly uh, counseling services for one. Um, we're collaborating with them to establish the peer support center, which was initiated at the end of last semester. So to make sure that that is up and running in September uh, for our peer supporters uh, to begin uh, meeting with students and also just having a very welcoming open environment for, for students to come to, whether that's online or in person. And we're kind of developing uh, or we will be uh, how that will look kind of online for them, but uh, they're very engaged to, to interact with students and really have the best interest of students at heart. Um, we're also working with them in student services to develop a mental health, a larger mental health committee to determine how we can better mental health at bishops and um, over the, the near years and uh, beyond into the future. Um, and yeah, working with clubs too, to see what is accessible for, for students to have online and in person. Uh, we're working on a restructuring a bit with them as well um, to, uh, to see how we can best connect them with members of the university. Um, that's, if that's academic societies, um, connecting them more with uh, members and our senators um, and whatnot. Um, we'll be chatting with accommodation services and um, and student services on a number of various other projects with the representatives along with a um, cultural week to celebrate the large diversity that we have at our university. Um, I think that would likely take place or we're looking into it anyways, um, probably during the winter, but nothing set in stone as of yet. But uh, that is a project that we're hoping to uh, to take on this year that I think a lot of our viewers will be understanding to the fact that there's a lot of plans that will be, will be made, but really some of it's going to be out of your hands and you're going to have to go with the, go with the flow, depending on what the public health requirements are and some of the restrictions. So, um, you know, congratulations to you guys for having to deal with this added adversity and trying to be not only future tellers and look into your crystal ball, but also try and organize from your remote, remote locations where you are right now. Um, but, as a, as a new incoming student to help them, you know, get more involved with campus, how, if someone is interested in student government, how can they get involved as a new student at Bishops? Enzo, maybe you want to take that one? Yep, absolutely. So we actually have elections three times a year. So we have a general election once in the fall. Um, that's where we'll usually elect our general counselors, our first year rep, and our on-campus rep. So that's coming up in either September, October. Again, we don't know, depending on how the situation um, develops. Then we have our executive election in the winter semester. No specific dates yet, of course. Um, and then we have another general election in the winter semester that we elect the, uh, the remaining board for the following year. So that's how to get involved in terms of the, um, I guess, political level or part of the student government. But there's other ways to get involved in the SRC. We have student jobs, we have student opportunities, um, we're an organization that has a bunch of opportunities for students. So on our website, we'll have way more information that can um, probably address any of your questions. But if not, we can also um, ask any of us at any time and we can give more clarity to that. Great. Um, I, 
I think yeah, an, an important thing for that is um, you can follow the BUSRC on Instagram and Facebook, and that's where everything that we ever do will be posted, and you'll just get live updates, and as soon as a job's available or a position's available, it will be posted there, and then also our website is also available at BUSRC.com, I think, probably. Yeah. Google it. <laughs> Excellent. So what other advice can you guys give to new students coming in this fall? Um, you know, thinking back to two, three, four years ago when you guys started, what are some of the things that, uh, that you wish you would have known that you know now? Well, I can definitely say that, you know, you should take opportunities. I know it's, it might be very different from my first semester when, when the fall comes, but I'm sure there's going to be a tremendous amount of opportunities still and, and take them and try them. And if you don't like it, that, you know, what's the worst that could happen? You just, you know, you're just going to find something else. Explore, be a wonderful place. You get to be able to choose classes in any department. Uh, you, you do your program and you have electives and you can explore other things. You can add a minor, you can add a major. So the important is just keep your mind open and make sure you explore a bit before settling in. Um, there's also, you know, we're, we're definitely going to be there throughout the year as well to support that. Uh, they were, Enzo and Amelia were talking about the student jobs and uh, uh, student positions, but we also help facilitate uh, any employment or just try that we try to share opportunities, try to help clubs develop these opportunities. Um, on my end, in the academic department, we, we will have the Student Success Center, which has been running for a few years, uh, in which we have the peer mentors who are going to be able to both help you organize and, and uh, set your time, a bit of study help as well, but also guide you through all these resources. Uh, and they will be made aware as much as possible of the jobs, of the opportunities, of the clubs, of everything you can do at Bishops, and it will be their role to guide you and to help you uh, figure out how you can get involved and how you can make the most out of your bishop's experience. Yeah, if I can give any piece of advice, and I think looking back at myself when I first entered bishops, um, it's just to stay true to who you are. Like when you're at BU, it is important to just be you. And when I came into bishops, I was shy, wasn't super social, um, wasn't great at making friends. Like that was just a reality of how I entered. But since then, I've been able to grow as a person. Um, now I'm doing these video calls. I've been meeting with a lot of people. Um, president of the SRC, kind of crazy to think about looking back. So, but I think as long as you, you stay true to who you are um, and just grow along the way and try new opportunities and bishops is, is great for that. So take the chances that you're comfortable, take the, the risks, I should say, that you're comfortable taking. Um, but if you feel like it's, it's going against who you are as a person, then that's perfectly fine and you don't have to do it. And I think either way you'll, you'll grow as an individual and you'll get all the same opportunities as everyone else. Okay. Izzy or Amelia, what is, what's your advice? Yeah, I think for myself as well, I think I would have liked to know when I was in first year, just how many points of contact there are in the university of people who are, are there and fueling the best interest of you and, and all the students at, at wide. Um, so, whether it's in the SRC with all the various representatives and senators um, in student life and academics or the uh, executives or uh, all the student services and the library, library members and professors who really have the best interest of students at heart. Um, I kind of got integrated into the university experience first by kind of like working in Sodexo and meeting a lot of people there and then um, also in, into Res Life, who are also a lot of people there who are really engaged in making the, the community experience on campus very, very vibrant and whatnot. But that uh, there truly are just so many people with, with open, uh, open availability to, to be reached out to, and that is exactly what they're there for, and that's exactly what we're there for. So um, just sort of recognizing those individuals and, and knowing that the door is open for, for you as a first year student or an upper year student is something I would have liked to know. Uh, and just to, to really get involved in clubs, not all of them have to be 
uh, 100% of your time commitment. It can be drop in once a semester or whatever, just as long as uh, you're, you're meeting people and, and developing your social circle and, and whatnot. They, it can really come in handy for having that support. And finally, also, I using counseling services, they, they are there for, for students. Um, I didn't use it myself until third year, uh, but probably could have come in handy eons before. And, um, but that, that truly everyone's there kind of uh, for, for students. Great advice. And how about you, Amelia? Yeah, so for me, it was not something that I wish I had known. It's something that I stumbled into within my first two weeks is I had met one of my teachers, uh, Dr. McKean Edwards, and she just kind of set me up on my path of what I'm going to do. She got me to in, like, in, enroll in doing an honors, like got me into doing my two of my minors and just got me on track, set me up to go. And I think the most important thing I learned from that was that like the teachers here at Bishops and all the professors, they're here not only to do the research but to teach you and they want to see you succeed and there's so many professors out there that want to help you and all you have to do is go there and ask or go there and present yourself introduce yourself say hello when you leave a classroom or you enter a classroom take the time to actually just say hello to them it doesn't have to be long it's just enough so you get to know them and realistically if your program's small you're going to have them in more than one class throughout your three or four years so they're great resources to help you in any part of the time that you spend here and also beyond. I know like my older sister graduated and she still reaches out to some professors from here that just really stuck to her. And I think that's really important for people to know that the professors aren't like another, any other schools where they don't know who you are. If you make the effort, they will know who you are and they will help you. Um, and I think my second point is that if, if your friends are deciding to go and join a club, go check it out with them. I, I was forced to go to a fashion show audition in my first year and then two years later I ended up running the whole thing and I had a team of 150 fantastic volunteers and we raised boatloads of money for an amazing organization and that was literally just because my friends were like we're going to go audition come with us and I said sure. So if you're if you feel comfortable you want to be involved in something Stick your leg out there or follow the friends that are taking you there because they'll like it'll lead to such fantastic things so yeah get involved and talk to your teachers <laughs> all great advice so thank you so much george philippe enzo isabel and amelia for joining me today i appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to have a little chat and join us on our co-video isolation series so that will conclude another episode of our bu co-video isolation series don't forget to join us for our next episode coming soon to a screen near you. So until then, stay healthy and stay safe, everyone. Take care.